We don't get to go further into God's will until we've acted obediently on the word that he's already given us. To some of you, he's been saying, I want you to move. See, all of us have our lands of Ur and Haran. And the Lord is saying to all of us, nobody gets a pass. It's time for you to move. Notice Abram says nothing. He doesn't own it. The pain always gets past when we buy into the myth that we can manage our own self-preservation. What Lot didn't take into account was that choices that are made on the basis of selfishness never lead to good things. God has not made us to be selfish creatures. God is beckoning each and every one of us to quit paying attention to whatever that thing is that has us so absorbed in the moment and to look up and to see, oh, you've got something else for me out there. Something bigger, something better than I ever imagined possible. God is not afraid of our doubts. God is not offended by our questions. He doesn't get angry and strike down Abram with a lightning bolt saying, how dare you question me? Abram decided to trust in God over and above his doubts instead of fleeing from his faith. And his faith, his decision to believe God, his decision to trust in God's promise, it was counted to him as righteousness. God meets Hagar in her misery as she's running. And you know something? He still meets us in our misery. God meets us on the run and he knows your name and he knows who you are and he knows what you've been through and he can take all of those things and he can work them together no matter how bad they are he can work them together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes the way you become one of abram's children is by doing what abram did trust in the one true god and you'll be blessed as abram was That's the only way to the path of purpose in our lives.